You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Anything on the radar? Uh, not yet. No signal at all. Try 4.0, true. It'll probably come from that direction. I had her on that all morning, sir. Still nothing. You're past your time, aren't you? Who's your relief? Al Baines, Captain. Baines? <laughs> I'll see what happened to him. Yes, sir. Morning, all. Anything yet? Afraid not. They lost, you figure? There's no telling. Okay, if we fill our containers now? Go ahead. As long as the water supply holds out. Be a while till the next batch is ready. Julie! Where's your husband? He... he was sleeping, Captain. Get him, Julie. Is something wrong? There's something wrong. Yes, sir. How does it taste today, Henry? Same as always, hot, flat, and unforgettable. <laughs> but wet. Suffer it a little bit more. Six months from now, you'll be drinking chocolate ice cream sodas. You want to see me, Captain? There's a man in the radar tower who'd like to see you, Al. He would have liked to see you two hours ago when you were supposed to relieve him. I overslept. Tell that to Hank Parker up there in the tower. Tell him you overslept and then be good enough to tell him, Al, that you'll stand his watch all day tomorrow. That's not fair, Captain. It doesn't happen often. Once is too often, Al. More than once is intolerable. And many more than once is a case history of Albert Baines who likes his sleep. I prefer it to a stupid game in the hot sun, both of them. A game, Al? What are we listening for? Thirty years of two shifts a day. What have we ever heard? Wind noise. And what have we ever picked up on the radar screen? Dust particles? But anything to make you happy, Captain. You listen to me. There's a ship on its way. And when it reaches this atmosphere, it may want to be vectored in. They may want landing instructions, wind direction, ground temperature. And if Al Baines is in the sack, we may spend the rest of our lives here. Is that what makes you happy, Al? How do we know there's a ship out there, Captain? A lot of garbled static two months ago that you told us was a message, and then nothing. Two whole months, and you decide there's a ship coming here to take us back. You make the rules and set the watches and plan the days, and now you tell us the Messiah is coming. To tell us to pray? The difference between you and me, Captain Benteen, is that I do my dreaming when I'm asleep. You do yours on your feet. There's a ship coming, Al. All of us believe it. Because he tells you to. And we believe him. Whatever Captain Benteen says, that's what will happen. Sure you believe him. He tells you this is the best of all possible worlds, and by God, you break into song. You're sweating your lives away on this rock, but the captain says it's paradise, and we have to clap our hands. Rule by hypnosis. Al, there's a ship coming. This happens to be a fact. There's a ship coming. 
believe it. I tell you, it'll happen. And you know it's real, just as you know this is real. You haven't forgotten our ship, have you? The Pilgrim One? The first spaceship sent up to colonize the outer regions? And this plaque, placed here by the 130 men, women, and children who established the first off-Earth colony. We owe them our belief, because they had faith. Don't ever forget that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better go check on the generator. This is William Benteen, who officiates on a small outpost in space, an outpost slowly disintegrating under the heat of two suns with the holes, the cracks, the fissures that are the residue of despair. He tries to fill them with faith and to retain a faith of his own. This is a remnant society, a handful of people who left the Earth looking for a millennium, a place without war, without jeopardy, without fear. What they found was a lonely, barren place whose only industry was survival. And this is what they have done for decades, survive. Until the memory of the Earth, they came from what has become an indistinct and shadowed recollection of another time and another place. Two months ago, a signal from Earth announced that a ship would be coming to pick them up and take them home. In just a moment, we'll hear more of that ship, more of that home and what it takes out of mind and body to reach it. Because this outpost is located in the far reaches of the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, On Thursday We Leave for Home, starring Barry Bostwick with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Keep the generator running, sir. No wonder. Look at these wires. They're rotten. That's all we got, Captain. No backup? This is it. Any insulation? That's all gone, too. We used it on the uh, converter belts. Well, we have to get the current running somehow. If that refrigeration unit stays off, the temperature in the underground rooms will go up 50 degrees. Well, we could stop the saltwater converter for a day or so, switch the parts. Then we'll have to do that. Tell the people to fill up all the jugs they have. We'll be shutting off the water in six hours. Yes, sir. Captain? What about the ship? It's on the way. We know that much. Then, everything will be different. When we get back, the things that are old and worn out, we'll throw them away. Just throw them away. Captain, Captain, Captain Benteen. What? The main square. Come quick. It's Mrs. Rodale. She's hanged herself. Cut her down. What happened? Is that lady all right? Get them out of here. Come, children. God have mercy on her. You men there, prepare her. We'll bury her in an hour. Yes, sir. We now consign to, to this planet, the remains of Mary Rodale. We ask God in his infinite mercy to give her the serenity and joy that she sought while she was with us. And we ask his forgiveness for her sin. Amen. 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 We ask that this good woman be allowed to rejoin her beloved husband who preceded her in death 11 years ago. 
Bid your farewells now. Forgive her, Lord. Have mercy on her, Lord, for what she's done. A terrible thing. She didn't know what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. Better and clearer than the rest of us. Oh, no. This is a funeral, Al. The ninth funeral in the last six months. Nobody talks about it. We just let it go by. But there have been nine people who thought that maybe heaven is a place where they can get a drink of water without salt in it. Where they'll be able to breathe air without choking on the heat of it. If you want to talk blasphemy, I'll take it away from here. I'm talking truth, Captain Benteen. I'm saying that this woman and the others, they took their own lives because living became intolerable. And I say that dying was their right. Anything else? Just this question. I put it to everyone here. Al, please. No! Isn't living tough enough that we don't have to do it by the book? Isn't it hot and blinding and miserable enough that there shouldn't have to be rules? So that we shouldn't have to suffer by the numbers? Will anyone make the simple observation that there's far more happiness going into that hole than what's left above ground? There's more peace of mind in that dead body than in all you mourners put together. What we've got here is anguish. Captain Benteen, let us live with it or die from it in our own way. Young Mr. Baines here wants us to lie down in the sun. Young Mr. Baines would have us give in to death when there is still life. He would end all the rules. He'd throw away the regulations. There'd be no standing in line for water. Let the strong take it away from the weak. No rationing of food. Let the young steal it from the old. And when that ship comes down to take us back to Earth, it won't find a society. It will find only a pack. There'll be no human beings left. Only animals. There's a ship coming. It's winging its way in now. It's on its way. Say it! Say it out loud! Let me hear you say it! There's a ship coming! 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 That's right! There's a ship! There's a ship! Yes! A ship that's coming to take us! Hear that? Can you hear that, everyone? Do you hear? It's the. Meteor storm! It's a meteor storm! Find shelter! Get inside! Up to the cave! Get up to the cave! Julie! It's Julie! She's bleeding! Quickly! We have to move! I can't. Something hit my arm. I think it's broken. Stand aside. I'll carry it. It's just a cut to the forehead, not very deep. But keep this bandage on it. Julie? Julie, honey? Can you hear me? Al? Don't let her move just yet. She may have a concussion. How's your arm? It's not broken. Must have been a rock that hit it. Captain, thank you. For a little first aid. <laughs> no thanks necessary. I deliver babies, too. You might want to keep that in mind. Now I'd better go see to the others. Will it go on much longer, Captain? I wish I knew. It sounds like it's spending itself. I've seen meteor storms before, Captain. Nothing this size. What about the damage, Henry? Two underground cells destroyed. At least, that's what it looked like from out front. 
Everybody accounted for? I think we're all here, Captain. I've checked. Nobody's missing. Thank God. Everyone try to stay calm. The worst of it is over. Jojo? Yeah, Captain? You're not scared, are you? Well, kinda. Now, we can't have that. Mind if I sit for a minute? We'll talk, you and me. Captain, tell me about the Earth. Would you, Captain? Tell us what you remember. Yes, do. Well, all right, I guess I can do that. We'd like to hear. You, over there, is that you, friend? Yes, Captain. And you, Buck. Yes, sir. You fill in the holes if I leave out anything. Straighten me out if I'm wrong about any of my recollections. Jojo, I was a boy of 15 when we arrived here. But I remember Earth. I remember it as... as a place of color. I remember that in the autumn, the leaves changed. They turned different colors, red, gold, orange. And I remember streams of water that flowed down hillsides. And the water was sparkling and clear. And I remember clouds in the sky, white, billowy things that floated like great majestic ships. They looked like sails. What are sails? Don't you know what sails were? In ancient times, that's how ships moved across the water. There was so much water. The men unfurled large sheets of canvas against the wind. And it was the wind that moved them. And I can remember night skies. Night. Endless black velvet stars, and sometimes a moon that seemed to hang there as, as big as the face of an old man, looking down on us all. Captain, what's night? Why, that was the quiet time, Jojo. Night was when the earth went to sleep. It was the cover it pulled over itself. Not like here, with two suns always shining, always burning. It was a darkness that felt like... like... a cool hand brushing over tired eyes. And there was snow on winter nights. Gossamer things that drifted down and turned the earth all white. And we could build snowmen the next morning and see our breath in the air. And... It was good then. It was right. So, why did you leave there? Oh, we thought we could find another Earth, Jojo. Then we found... this. We thought we could escape war. We thought, uh, we thought we could build an even better place. And it took us 20 years to find out that we had left our home a billion miles away only to be stranded, like visitors, transients, that no roots could take hold in this ground. But it was too late. So we spend the next 30 years watching a clock and a calendar and waiting. But we can't wait any longer. Not a day, not an hour. We have to get back home. There's no more time. I'll go outside and survey the damage. Charm. Radar tower is still standing. What? Why, it's... Al! 
Al Baines, do you hear that noise? All of you, come out here. Do you hear it? What is that? It's not a meteor shower. That's not a meteor. And it's not wishful thinking. Not this time. Those are rocket engines. Look, I remember the sound of them. That's the ship. The ship has come at last. Pretty fast. Watch your step. It looks like you got plenty of room for everybody. Do you have any water? Clean water? We have enough. Oh, doesn't that sound wonderful? Delicious. Careful. I better talk to your leader. You have one, don't you? Sure do. Captain Benteen. I don't see. You're standing over there. Hey, Captain, come see the ship. Mr. Benteen? I'm Benteen. Colonel Sloan. I command the Galaxy 6. Our orders are to transport you all back to Earth. <laughs> Colonel, what took you so long? Six and a half months, Mr. Benteen. A hundred times that. We've been waiting for 30 years. Does it all look like this? Salt flats and scrubby mountains. Two suns, hot and perpetual. Thirty years of it. Thirty years. The children have never seen Earth, and some of the older ones don't even remember it. They'll see it now. Our orders are to get you aboard as soon as possible. We figure that we should be able to lift off on Thursday. Are you still using Earth time? Of course. Good. That'll give you three days to prepare. Unfortunately, your people will only be able to take what they can carry. Over 200, aren't there? 187 men, women, and children. It may be a little crowded, but we'll fit you all in. You've been used to a lot of space, Mr. Benteen, haven't you? Space? Room to move around. Oh, uh, that's all there is here. That and the heat. I can feel it. They'll make the trip standing on their heads if necessary. I'm sure they will, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Do you know? Can you understand? What a godsend this is for all of us. It's hard to imagine. I can only say your country's very, very proud of you. What of the Earth? Has it changed? Not too much. Still green? Still green. And the cities? The cities still stand. And war? As always, I'm afraid. One dies down, another one springs up. But through some miracle and the grace of God, we never had the big one. Now, Mr. Benteen, all things considered, I think you'll find it very much as you left it. Captain Benteen. Captain? That's what the people call me. This place, their very lives, it's all been my responsibility. You've done quite a job, Captain Benteen. But you can rest easy. I'll take over the responsibilities now. No need. I'm used to the job, Colonel. The living quarters, they're underground? I was saying, Colonel, I'm used to the responsibility. I wouldn't quite know how to function without it. Is it cooler there, Mr. Benteen? I'm sorry, I didn't... Your underground rooms, are they much cooler? Yes, they're refrigerated. Uh, it's... it's... Uh, Captain. Morning, Captain. George. The best morning ever. We just wanted to say thank you, Captain. Why? For what? For keeping us alive all these years. That's right. Without the Captain... None of us would be here. That's not necessary. You better believe it, Colonel. I do. I do believe it. Captain Benteen? Go ahead, Colonel Sloan. That's all right. I'll see to the others. You know, I don't need this. I'm not going to take this. Hi, Captain. Julie, where's your bandage? Oh, I don't need it anymore. But we put one around your head so the cut would heal. What's this? 
Isn't it incredible? It's called a medicinal patch. You wear it for 24 hours. It accelerates the growth of new skin. Look at her forehead, Captain. You can hardly see the scratch. Better put the sling back on your arm, Al. I don't need a sling. Just this metal band. It's magnesium. Colonel Sloan said my arm would be perfect by the end of the week. Well, I, uh... I seem to have had my practice taken away from me. But while we're here, I'd use that sling. I'll bet I've fixed about 500 broken wings in my time, and the only way to be sure it heals properly is to keep the limb immobile. Where's Colonel Sloan? I want to ask him what to pack. Uh, Eleanor, uh, let me help you with that bundle of clothing. Thank you kindly, Captain. I'll carry it for you. No, thank you, crewman. I've got it. Here you go, ma'am. I don't know how to thank you. Are all the crew as strong as you? That's our job, ma'am. Nothing to it. <laughs> Hello there, Captain. Well... I'm so excited. How much longer? Not long. Be patient. May I have your attention, everyone? <laughs> Quiet, please. What is it, Captain? As all of you know, we have less than 36 hours before we depart. And as I told you earlier, there is a maximum allowance of 14 pounds per person. Soon we'll begin weighing your belongings, and if we're over the limit, I'll make up a list of necessary items. I hope I'm not intruding, Captain. I was just telling them about the weight requirements. We'll handle all that tomorrow. I heard you'd called a meeting here in the cave, so I brought Lieutenants Engel and Rafferty with me. Everyone has so many questions about Earth, I thought perhaps this would be a good time. Actually, Colonel, the purpose of this meeting is simply to make some last-minute arrangements. Colonel, I used to live in San Diego. Is California still the same? Sunny and warm most of the time, but not this warm. Los Angeles has become the biggest city in the world. These kinds of questions, we could just as well handle them when... Colonel Sloan? Are there still major leagues? My dad used to tell me about baseball and the World Series. The leagues are just as before, American and national. What about the Dodgers? <laughs> they, they came in tenth last season. I'm told they need pitchers pretty desperately. I'll tell you what. When we're finished here, we'll improvise a ball and bat and have ourselves a game. How's that sound? Yes. That'd be great. Let's do it. I, th I, think, I think it's a little hot for that kind of activity. What we could do is have some group singing. We haven't done that for a while. I got an old sack. That'll be the ball. Who's got a stick? What are we waiting for? Let's go. Yeah. Please. Please, wait. We haven't finished yet. Jojo. Jojo, I haven't told you a story in a long time. How would you like to hear a story about... What have you got there? This is what they call candy. One of the spacemen gave it to me. It tastes... It tastes... Sweet, Jojo. It tastes sweet. Yeah, sweet, Captain. Want a bite? No, oh, thank you, Jojo. Back on Earth, we can get all we want. Something, Captain? I'm not sure. I'm not at all sure. You've promised them all candy. You've made it sound as if... Uh, as if that was what the Earth is made of. Sugar and spice and everything nice. Maybe... Maybe they ought to be told the truth. The universal language. Baseball. You have a limited vocabulary, Colonel. Do you have any idea what the temperature is? At this hour, it's about 110. I don't know whether your crew can take it, but I know my people. They're going to pay for this little athletic event. Some of the older ones? It might even be serious for them. It's just a game, Benteen. My guess is that it's worth it. Now, I'd better get back to the ship. Colonel Sloan. Something else, Mr. Benteen? Colonel, when we get on the ship, you can tell us what to do and we'll all fall into line. But here, in this place, 
I'm in command. I'm not trying to usurp authority, Mr. Benteen, but I really don't see what harm a little game... It's still Captain Benteen. For now. <sighs> Galaxy crewman, back to the ship. That's an order. Oh, come on. It's time for rest now. All of you go back to your homes. I'll announce when the new day will start. You happy now, Captain? I was never unhappy, Colonel. I just happen to know what's right and what's wrong. I ask you to keep your crew in the ship during the rest time. I don't want my people distracted. You rule with a heavy fist. If it were one ounce lighter, no one would have survived. I've held these people together by will. They'd have died, Colonel, without someone they could hold on to. They'd have withered away. Not anymore, Captain. Relax. That's a luxury I've never been able to afford, Colonel. I've never been able to marry, to think only of myself, because of them. I've been a father figure, a governor, a confessor. I've been all those things. And if I hadn't been, there'd be no life here. These are my people. Understand? My people. What's with him, Colonel? Now bear with him a little bit longer, fellas. He's really quite a man. He's got just one minor aberration. And what's that? He believes he's God. As far as he's concerned, we're booting him out of heaven. Yes? Mr. Captain Benteen is here, sir. Showman. Very well, sir. Come in, Captain. Sorry, my quarters are a bit cramped. Please, sit down. Colonel Sloan, this is a list of all passengers with their approximate weight and the weight of their belongings after each name. The scale we have is pretty beat up. My guess is that it underweighs by about four or five pounds. Fine, fine. All I wanted was an approximation. We'll weigh them in on our own equipment before blast off. This is Wednesday, 12 midnight? I keep getting confused with the constant light. When do the people get up? About two, Earth time. The hours from 7 until 1.45 are the hottest. That's when we try to stay indoors. Then we have our meetings at the cave about two hours afterwards. We've had to improvise our own schedule. You've improvised very well, Captain. I looked at the saltwater converter, your electro plant, the sun shields you put up over the crops. Very inventive. Necessity hasn't been the mother of invention here. It's been the father and the whole family. <laughs> well, you'll be able to give way to progress now. Though I wonder if all of it'll be to your liking. The way you'll be lionized when you get back to Earth. You're referred to in the press as the Lost Pioneers. They're gonna make quite a thing of you when we land. Oh? Wherever any of your people settle, there'll be keys to the cities, brass bands. I expect they'll scatter all over the U.S. The government's had inquiries by, well, it must be thousands of relatives. My guess is that they'll just about have time to look into a television camera and then get whisked off. Well, they won't be scattered, Colonel. They'll go as a group. We'll find a place where we can settle, and that's where we'll stay. I, I'm talking about when we get back to Earth, Captain. That's what I'm talking about. They won't be splitting up. Not my people. Captain, as a point of interest, did you ever ask them? Ask them what? whether they'd want to stay together. That would be a ridiculous question, like asking a child if he wants some more, uh, some more ice cream. They're children, you see, Colonel. Oh, chronologically, they range from six months to 60-odd years, but socially, psychologically, they're children. I've kept them alive and functioning all this time. Once we're back on Earth, I'll simply continue the process. Captain Benteen, have you told them that? Have you told them that after 30 years of waiting, 30 years of living in a compound, they're going to travel a billion miles just to walk into another one? Have you? There's no need. They wouldn't have it any other way. To leave them to their own devices, that would be an act of cruelty. Captain, do me one favor. Just ask them. <laughs>
Naturally, we won't have to concern ourselves with the colder climates, the northeastern states, the upper regions of the Great Plains. We'll find an area much farther to the south, perhaps Florida or Texas. Southern California has a temperate climate. Uh, Captain, you better tell us about frostbite treatment, because I'm moving to Wisconsin. That's where my family settled originally. What about Oregon, Captain? That's where Joan and I plan to settle. I've heard about the forest there. Please, wait a minute. You don't understand. <clears throat> uh, let me make this clear. All of you will have a chance to meet your relatives. I see no reason why visits can't be arranged, perhaps even for a week or more. But naturally, we'll remain together as a community in whatever land grant we obtain from the government or whatever given area we can arrange. I can assure you of one thing, and I hope put all your fears to rest. I'll remain as your, well, your guide, your consultant. And I guarantee that no one will lack for my help or my advice. Captain? Julie, Julie and I were thinking of farming. Why, that's a fine idea, Al. We'll farm just as we have farmed, but much more easily. The rainfall back on Earth is so plentiful. And as I told you, there's only one sun, so you won't have to shield the crops. Of course we'll farm. Certainly, we'll farm. Julie's got relatives in the state of Washington. You couldn't take the cold. None of you could. But I guarantee that wherever we settle, the farming will be good. I'll see to that. What's the matter? Don't you understand? We... we don't plan to stay together. You don't understand, Al. You've never understood much of anything. If we split up, I seriously doubt that we'd survive. Al, explain it to him. Go on. We'll survive, Captain. If anyone wants to stay together, that'll be their right. But if they want to go their own way, that'll be their right, too. Am I wrong, Colonel? You're not wrong. We're to take you back as a group. Once on Earth, you can do as you please. Colonel, let us settle our differences in our own way. There are no differences, Captain. There are differences. There are changes that have taken place on Earth. Things we aren't prepared for. Oh, the Colonel has made it sound like a big holiday. The good life just plucked off a tree. Well, friends, I don't want any of you disillusioned. Wherever men live, they grub, they scrabble. They have to dig to stay alive. It's a fact. But together, that's the word, together, we've got to stay together. Think of that word now. Let's say it out loud. Everybody, now. Together. 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 Looks like the congregation isn't with you anymore, Captain. What's the matter with all of you people? Wait. I've made the compartment assignments. I'd like to go over them with you. Assignments? There's not much time, and there's some things we have to check off. There's a decompression problem that we've got to tell them about, and a moment of weightlessness shortly after we leave the atmosphere that... I want to explain to the children. Do you know, do you know what we called you while we waited for you to come? We called you the Messiah. Did you? You were supposed to bring freedom, but that's not what you brought. You brought selfishness, dissatisfaction, divisiveness. With all the misery we've had here, those germs never infected us. I brought nothing but a ship and a crew and a means of escape. You've had no diseases, no viruses. Did it ever occur to you why? You've lived in a test tube, Captain. Antiseptic and germ-free and sterile. Sure, you're a group, a cell, but that's all over with. Now it's time for you to be what God meant you to be, individuals. Time to break the test tube. Time to rejoin the human race. What I'd like to know is, why in the name of God you're so reluctant about it? Because I remember the human race. This is incredible. Oh, it's really incredible. I was wrong, Colonel. I've been telling them about an Earth that doesn't exist. An imaginary garden. No. We can't go back. It's too late. Captain, really. Really. 
Everybody, gather around. I've got something to tell you. Listen to me, all of you. I want to tell you all. Uh, listen to me, uh, all of you. I, I want to tell you about the real Earth. Captain, are you all right? Let's talk about the diseases. What? The viruses, the cancers, the floods and the freezing, the wetness and the cold. And there are other, other miseries, worse than anything we've experienced. Hatred, jealousy, violence. Listen to me, it's an Earth we don't know. We can't leave here. We'd be committing suicide. We'd die of, of things we've never been exposed to before. We'd die of the loneliness that animals get in a zoo. Because we don't belong. We don't belong to his kind. Do you understand me? We don't belong there. Captain Benteen, why don't you let your children vote on it? Only if they know what's waiting for them. Only if they understand that Earth isn't any garden. It's never been, and it never will be. That's fair enough. I'll tell you what Earth is. The same as it's always been. It's a race struggling to survive, just as you have survived. Captain Benteen is right when he tells you that it isn't all a place of beauty. There may still be wars and prejudice and strife. I suppose there will always be jealous men and angry men and unforgiving men. But it has one thing you don't have. Every man is his own master. There won't be anyone telling you when to eat, and when to sleep, and when to meet, what to sing, and how to play. Instead of heat, you may feel cold, and instead of thirst, you may feel hunger. But you'll be men and women. You won't be sheep. You won't be a kindergarten. And when you pray to God, his name won't be Benteen. A vote now, Captain. And the majority wins. Those of you who want to be on the ship, ten hours from now, heading back to Earth, step forward. All right, I'm going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's it. Let's go. Yeah, I, know. I suppose that makes it unanimous, Benteen. Even you, Jojo. Well, I want to go with the Colonel. Give me something, anything. Give that sledgehammer. Here. Angle! Rafferty! There, sir. Stop him! He's running for the ship! No, no, no! Captain! Captain, no, please! We'll see how far you get. Without a tail fin! Put it down! Ah! Ah. Uh, uh. You all right, Colonel? I'm fine. What about the ship? Just a couple of dents, nothing serious. Lucky you stopped them when you did. Captain Benteen, let go. For everyone's sake, loosen your grip and let go. God help you. God help you all. Tomorrow you think you're getting on a ship headed for paradise. What you don't realize is you're heading for hell. What about you? I'll stay here. That's right. This is my home. This is where I belong. This is where you belong. You just don't have the brains or the guts or the sense to know it. This ship leaves at 0800 tomorrow. If you're not on board... I want no special privileges, Colonel Slow. No special treatment. If you're to blast off at 8, you blast off at 8. As for the rest of you, you can go on the ship or you can remain here with me. I'll be at the cave. Any who want to remain can meet me there. Thank <laughs> you.
That's it, folks. The rocket's fired up. Everybody on board, single file. What about the captain? I'll give it one last try. Lieutenant Engel, see to the passengers. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Where are you going, sir? To the cave. Captain? Benteen? Benteen, we know you're in here. Please, let us talk to you. He's not going to show himself, Colonel. We're leaving now. We have to blast off in five minutes. If we don't, we'll have lost our orbital position. Benteen, it has to be now. Captain! Captain, please, come out! Remember this. If we leave without you, there'll be no other ships. This is where you'll live the rest of your life. And this is where you'll die. All right, Benteen. As you prefer. Let's go, Baines. Goodbye, Captain. Hello, hello, friends, all together at the meeting place. Any new business today? No? Jojo, I'll bet you want to hear about Earth, about the rivers and the seas, the, the blue skies, or the night, the stars and the moon. Which do you want to hear about this time? Uh, there's, um, well, there's color on Earth, the change of seasons, and the wind, the wind brings the smell of the ground, the plants, the seeds, the roots, flower petals, sap from the trees, and the smell of the weather, the rain or the mist or the fog. And on the earth, on the earth, there's green, the color green, the feeling green. There's something fresh about it, something living. Earth. It's called Earth. Don't, don't, don't leave me. Please, no, don't leave. A man named Benteen, sometimes known as Captain, who had certain prerogatives. He could lead, judge, legislate, even dictate. It became a habit, and finally, a necessity. William Benteen, once a god, now a population of one, on a distant outpost in the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. 
The CD collections at our website are now being offered while supplies last at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often and I'll see you in the zone. On Thursday, We Leave for Home, starring Barry Bostwick with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, Christian Stolte, Elizabeth Lido, C.J. Amari, Richard Hensel, Justin Kaufman, Kurt Nabig, Joby Cerny, Jennifer Joy, Meg Falcon, Tracy Hernandez, Jake Salins, Doug James, Jeff Lupiton, and Amanda Amari. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design and custom Foley effects for The Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Michael Slaybach, and Matt Sorrow. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com.